I open up the Quran Wallahi I couldn't put it down Surat Al-Fatiha Surat Al-Baqarah Surat Al-Imran It was addictive the, the, You know the Torah and its corrupted version today Is probably one of the most boring books Books since War and Peace I mean seriously I don't know how somebody Can keep their eyes open just like this With action packed from the beginning And Wallahi I always I, I shouldn't say always But at that point I hated something about the Jews And I didn't know what it was I couldn't put the finger on it. Something about him I just didn't like. Here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying every criticism of the Jews, Surah Al-Baqarah, all the stupid questions they were asking one after the other, making things more and more and more harder for them. Talking about the arrogance. Exactly. But not in a hateful way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to them, but in a way to correct them and put them in the straight path, inshallah. This is unbelievable. Surah Al-Fatiha. The salat that we, I mean, this, this, this surah, and some people say it's, it's, also, uh, it's also a prayer, some are there. Just think what we say, sirat ahdina sirat al-mustaqeen, to guide us in the straight path. This sentence goes against everything Judaism stands for. <laughs> I think they, they, they say just the opposite in their prayers. Everything in the Jewish prayer was like a business deal between God and them. And don't forget what you promised us because of our... Uh, yeah, it, it's a business deal. Like God owes them something. <laughs> so, subhanAllah, this Islam is teaching people to go on the straight path. This just blew my mind. As a Jew, we were taught that the Goyim, or the Gentiles, are basically worthless. And the Talmud is full of fatawa, allowing shady business practices with Gentiles. But of course not with Jews, because they're the chosen people. Some people told me that they were chosen to be bombed. But, uh, that's a different thing. But, uh, not that we promote that, of course. As I said, when I looked in the first Quran again, when I looked at the first Ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, this just separated everything that the, the evil Talmud was teaching me. Wallahi, at this point now, I was addicted. I was an Islamaholic. Okay, I loved everything about Islam. And alhamdulillah, the first brother that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to guide me, he was upon a good manhaj, he had a good creed. I'm very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I had a good, good da'iya that put me on the straight path from the beginning. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I learned that Islam was based on zaleel and evidences. And I saw, alhamdulillah, unlike that evil rabbi that I spoke to, Islam is very strong in denouncing deviance in every aspect. Whereas these Jews, they go in the government of the Yahud, and he's, he's, not, he's supposed to be a religious Jew, and he's putting on a whole hope that he's religious, and he goes in the government. And, alhamdulillah, one of the names of Allah, Al-Hakim, this is what Allah teaches us, that there's only Sharia in Islam. Islam teaches us to go against the tyrant that leaves some of our land, unlike these rabbis or the stolen Muslim lands as you call it and Islam says that anybody that rules by anything other than 100% Sharia has committed an act of kufr this impressed me so much Islam was a complete religion so Alhamdulillah Rabbi Arameen after finishing the Quran and reading it the first time I had to go home and tell my wife, Yani Fish Elbeck. I had to get it off my get it off my heart. I, I couldn't hold it anymore. I returned back. I I mean I returned to my house. I told my wife, come on, Luna then. I said, Luna, let's go for a walk. Let's go in the park a little bit. Now this is my Jewish wife at that time of nine years. We went out in the park, I said, listen, Luna. I just want to tell you something. I read the Quran and Alhamdulillah I'm a Muslim. I don't believe in the deen of the Yahud anymore. And I just want to tell you, you know, you can say whatever religion that you want, if you want it, not every religion, but you can say upon the Judaism that you're upon now. And you can even put the kids in Jewish schools. We have the Ruqsa from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was married to Safiya that was a Jew that asked them. 
And my wife was really from Ahl Kakab, she wasn't uh, some Jewish woman from the Shari. My wife told me, I was born a Jew, I'll die a Jew. And she was very upset. I said, listen, again, I'm not forcing you to do anything. Wallahi, I, I love my wife and I loved her then. And I told her, you can do what you want, but I have to be honest with you, I'm a Muslim. We went back to my house. I can't believe it, I just told my wife this. I called I, I logged on, I told Salah. I just told my wife, I'm a Muslim. SubhanAllah, I don't know, what, how did I do that? How did I tell my wife I'm a Muslim? I, I have no idea what's going to happen now. This brother Salah told me in Emirat, Ya Yusuf, just make dua. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up her heart. And we're going to make dua here in, in Emirat, inshaAllah. And you be the example of what's a good Muslim. Let us see what a Muslim is. In Maghrib, she didn't have a very good influence by the neighbors. Of, you know, there were many Jahl Arabs, but there wasn't too much Islam in her area. Two weeks later, Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen, my wife took Shahada, was reading Quran. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. We started to make uh, the Salat in our home in, in Palestine or uh, quote unquote Israel where we lived then. They used to have these shutters. You, can, you pull the shutters down. And, you know, I used to put these shutters down. Didn't let my kids see that we were Muslim yet because they were still in Jewish schools. I used to make my salat in private. I had this thing, I had a laptop, and I had this program, how to how to It's a very old program, I'm sure many of you have it here. And I used to stand, and I used to look to my right, and had the laptop on the table, and then I used to push the button to go to the next, just to see how, because there were no Muslims. There was nowhere I could go, I just had my laptop. SubhanAllah. My kid, Abdul Aziz, he's the second from the youngest, then his name was Ezra. He's a very sweet boy, alhamdulillah. Sweet as sugar, this boy. But he hated, he hated his teachers, he hated the school he was in, the Jewish school. He used to bring home the school picture and he would just rub out the teacher's face, he would just scratch it out. He was full of venom. He didn't know, he didn't know at this time that we are Muslim. We didn't say anything about Islam. I went to a... A parent uh, teacher conference. The lady tells me, his teacher, Mr. Cohen, your son Ezra told me that one day his father is going to come here with the Muslims and he's going to kill everyone in this room. <laughs> oh Lord, that's what he told me. This is subhanAllah, this is the fitra that my son was in. I never said this, these words never came from my mouth, I don't teach these things to my kids. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, he made his bara very good from the beginning. So, I said I don't know where he got it from. But Allah, I have no idea, I, didn't, I never said these things to him. So we started to talk to the kids slowly about Islam. First thing we had to teach them about is Isa alayhi wasalam. Because the Yahud in the Talmud, in the house of Talmud, it makes fun of Isa alayhi wasalam and it makes fun of uh, Maryam, the mother of Isa, the mighty prophet and the Messiah of Islam. And alhamdulillah they took it very well. I used to take my son Abdul Rahman, the oldest one, to Aqsa. I, mind you, I was living 90 kilometers from Aqsa, down south near Aqsa. So we would go in and come out in Saleh, and then we had to be home by Yuma Juma because by the, by the Yahud, by, by Friday sundown, there's no car, no electricity, everything stops. So I used to run there and come back. I took Abdul Rahman.